Hello friends, uh, after going through the microscope and metallography, let us talk about microstructure a little bit. Okay, so, the idea here to why, why we want to discuss microstructure is that we want to understand that what we see in a sample or in a material, okay, what are the different features okay, can be possible in, in a material. Just to get a hang of the word or the term microstructure and what can be there, okay, so this is just an understanding. Okay, again, you may feel that some of the terms are not known to you okay, and some of the ideas are still not uh, covered in this particular course. Okay, so, again uh, after going through let us say phases, phase diagram and so on later on, okay, you can again come back to this um, uh, uh, lecture to get an idea about that what we were discussing about microstructure here. Okay, so, just to get, give you an idea about when we say microstructure, what do we mean by microstructure? Okay, just want to take few examples here and uh, kind to impress upon you that what different features are uh, there in the microstructure. Okay. So, usually when we talk about microstructure, we talk about uh, a term or we talk about a material which is polycrystalline. Okay. Polycrystalline, poly means there are many okay, and crystalline means crystals. Okay. So, when you have many crystals and they are together, okay, then only you we talk about some microstructure in the material. Okay. So, it can uh, these crystals can be uh, we can uh, we also call it as grains okay, or grain and when two grains meet okay, they have some boundary obviously like two countries are there. Okay. So, one country is there the next start for example, from India to Bangladesh there has to be a boundary between the two entities. Okay. So, similarly two grains two entities okay there has to be a boundary between them okay and normally all engineering materials are polycrystalline okay and they contain large number of these crystals and they are kind of uh, uh, have a, uh, these are agglomerate kind of thing okay and uh, you have features in between them okay there can be another class of material this is polycrystalline okay there can be another class of material which is called single crystal Okay. So, now I do not have large number of crystals, okay. I have only one crystal in the whole material okay. and this type of uh, materials are required or this type of uh, uh, arrangement is required in very specialized condition. Okay. For example, your uh, uh, electronic material or silicon wafer, okay. this, this is a single crystal silicon wafer or you have turbines. Okay. A high temperature turbines like gas turbines or maybe a jet engine of aeroplane okay and there these materials are operating at a very high temperature and you can also understand the rpm of these uh, turbines is also very high okay so under very high stresses and high temperature condition okay and uh, in high temperature uh, when material is at high temperature, the deformation uh, starts through grain boundary. Okay. So, I do not want grain boundary there. Okay. So, in these cases, I want to have a single crystal. Okay. For example, in this slide also, this is taken from uh, one website which is given here. It is uh, University of Cambridge website okay and lot of uh, different material uh, material on metallurgy is given there you can go through that also okay so there are three blades are shown here turbine blades one is of course polycrystalline you can see different crystals are there okay with different colors the another blade is directionally solidified structure means i want to have the grains in a particular direction only Okay, so, in this case now you can see that the grain boundaries are all parallel to the length of the turbine blade. Okay. These are called directionally solidified structure and the third is single crystal. Now, here you see that there is no feature here because these are all single crystal or only the atomic arrangement will be there and because we are not looking at the atomic structure here, we are looking at the microstructure, I would not be able to see those atoms. Okay. So, what I will see, I will see nothing here. 
okay, because there, is, there are no feature, only one single crystal. Okay. And you can see with this arrow that what they are saying that it is increasing resistance to creep deformation. Okay. So, creep is hap, creep happens at high temperature. Okay. So, a single crystal blade will have least deformation, okay, which we actually want. We do not want deformation of this blade, but if you have a polycrystal, uh, single, uh, a directionally solidified crystals or you have equixed uh, uh, crystal structure, then the creep deformation will be more, which we do not want. Okay. So, this is another class of material which is called single crystals. Okay. Then the third class of material can be amorphous material. Okay. For example, in uh, case of crystals, we saw that, that the atoms are arranged at a fixed position, which is given by the particular lattice. Okay. But in case of amorphous material, the atomic arrangement will be a random arrangement. So, it can be anything, okay. something like this any arrangement is there. Okay. There is no uh, kind of uh, a regular arrangement of atoms okay, which we see in crystalline materials. Okay. So, amorphous material where the arrangement is all random. Okay. So, all these bond lengths are of different type. Okay. So, I am just drawing it properly. Okay. These bond lengths are all of different type. Okay. So, it is a random statistical arrangement of atoms. Okay, and that is how the amorphous materials are defined. Okay, there is no crystallinity here. Okay, and glass is a very good example of uh, this type of uh, material, okay, which has a, a random arrangement of atom and it is amorphous. Glass also is a very good class of material in the sense lot of development is being done in the glass. And one of the most popular example is all your smartphones nowadays. Okay. When uh, the advertisement come or uh, sometime on the TV, there are uh, this home shop kind of thing where they show that they have a gorilla glass okay. or they have a very uh, glass which you, if you drop it also it is not breaking and there is no scratch, there are no scratches on the glass when you kind of put some so some sharp ob object on that or you just scratch it with you that. Okay. So, these are the glasses which are they have a special processing okay, to, to impart uh, good strength in the good strength, hardness and toughness in the glass. Okay. Our normal glass at home, okay, if I just drop it, it will fracture, okay. but these glasses are now toughened Okay, using different techniques. Okay, so there is a whole class of material development in glass also. For example, in case of cars also nowadays, if you see and if you compare with some older cars, okay, in case of an unfortunate accident, okay, you will see that glass pieces are breaking into very small pieces, and those pieces are also not having any sharp corners. These are all very kind of a square shape or something like that. Okay, one uh, image you can see in the slide also and it, it breaks into large number of pieces and those pieces are of very small size and they do also do not have very sharp corners. You can also recall this kind of uh, scenario from uh, if you compare the old movies and the new movies. In the old movies like in 70s, okay, when hero used to go through the glass, the glass particle, the fracture when those fragments if you uh, notice of those glasses, they are all very sharp. In fact, the stunt man used to get injured in the process. Okay. But nowadays if you see uh, in recent movies, okay, all these glasses break into very small pieces. Okay. Although sometime you must have seen in the showroom windows if somebody has thrown a stone those those glasses break into very small pieces and sometimes they don't even break they will stand there a uh, 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 fracture may might have taken place uh, uh, may, may the failure has taken place but the star glass is still standing there okay it is not falling on the ground all these developments are being done so that people don't get injured during any of these accidents okay so you can understand that uh, amorphous material also which 
people used to think of, uh, of no importance in, in engineering application. Okay. Now finding with the development in the glasses, okay, they are, we are seeing that there, are, there is a huge uh, kind of potential for this type of materials also. Okay. So this is another class of material. So you have polycrystalline material, single crystal materials for different application and you have amorphous material also and they also have a, a very useful uh, application at different places. Now uh, we will discuss more about polycrystalline because in this you actually see the microstructure. Okay? You would not see the microstructure in single crystal, you would not see the microstructure in the uh, amorphous material. Okay? So for example, uh, again you can see a microstructure is given on this slide. Okay? I see something as bright okay? and something as dark here. Okay? And in the previous lecture we saw that how we can get this dark feature which is what we call as grain boundary. Okay? So this is a grain, a crystal and this is a grain boundary. Okay? Another uh, how in three dimension you see these grains, okay? this is a titanium cast titanium alloy which has fractured through the grain boundary. So you can see that all these are one crystal okay? joined together at the grain boundary okay? and then there is another crystal and so on. Okay, again a very nice arrangement of different crystals okay, uh, an agglomerate of this crystal which make this polycrystalline material. Okay. Just to give you more uh, insight into this grain and grain boundary, okay, in the next slide I have taken uh, th this is a, a technique to get uh, microstructural information in terms of orientation of the crystal. Okay. So, for example, in this second image, if you see here, this is one grain, okay, and it, it is surrounded by the grain boundary. Okay. So, what I am trying to say is grain is see one crystal. Okay. So, I have kind of uh, highlighted the orientation of the unit cell. Okay. So, this is a cubic unit cell, okay, how it is oriented. So, if I see in the given grain, you see that all the unit cell at each position are of same orientation. That means this is one single crystal, one single grain okay, having the same orientation of the unit cell. Okay. But if I cross the grain boundary, okay, then the, the orientation of the unit cell has changed. So, suppose it is like this, so it has changed to something like this. Okay. Then if I cross another grain boundary here, again the orientation has changed. Here also if I go from this grain to this grain, the orientation has changed. Okay. Again the orientation has come back to what was here. Okay. So in each grain, okay, I can say that the, for example, atoms suppose are arranged very nicely like this. Suppose there is some type of arrangement in one grain. Okay. Now there is another grain which has a, suppose some different orientation. Okay. Uh, let us say I draw it like this. Okay. Now, when I keep on extending this, okay, you will see that somewhere the orientation has changed of this atomic arrangement. Okay. So, how to accommodate this? Okay. And this is now accommodated by a very small width of grain boundary which is actually in nanometer range. Okay. Now in this the atoms will be some will be having some random arrangement okay. again the proper arrangement will start. Okay. Uh, either here also it will be a proper arrangement and in between them there will be a, a random arrangement to accommodate the this mis misorientation between the two different arrangements. Okay. That is what is grain and what do we mean by grain boundary. Okay. So, this is just to tell you that in a single phase material you will see this uh, a bright feature like this which is a single grain okay. and between two grains there will be a grain boundary. Okay. Then there can be some other features. Okay. For example, some material may not have only one phase, it may have two or three phases also. Okay. For example, they, this is a two phase steel microstructure where ferrite is there. Okay. Again, these are names which, which are not known to you, okay. 
but this will be covered later on so you can again come back okay R right now you just take it from me that there are two phases okay and we have seen that when you have two different phases the phases may react with the agent in different ways okay and that can be captured through a microscope so here a ferrite is dark austenite another type of phase is white okay it is it, this particular image is taken from this uh, journal paper okay so this all this phase is alpha okay which is dark okay and all these phases gamma which is white okay and in this you see another feature again this will be covered later which we call as twins okay so if you see the grain boundary the grain boundary usually has this kind of a curved uh, feature or curved surface okay if you see any grain boundary it will have a curved surface okay but here if you see this particular boundaries they are very straight boundaries okay and usually they come also in pairs not always but most of the time okay and these are called twin boundaries so these these are special type of boundaries okay other than the boundaries which we just discussed okay so you you understand that um, when we see a microstructure there are so many different information you can get from the microstructure about their size about how they are distributed okay are there other features uh, also visible there okay and all this also when you get this information you can relate with the properties of the material okay then this is another uh, uh, type of uh, material basically steel okay where you again have this bright one is uh, alpha phase okay and this dark one which looks like one phase as a dark phase is a what we call as perlite okay again we will see what do we mean by perlite okay and if i want to have information about this that what this dark phase consists actually it consists of this very fine lamellas okay you see very very beautiful arrangement of white uh, bright and dark bright and dark okay uh, lamellas okay so the, again these are all con consist of two phases one is alpha another is uh, what we call as cementite fe3c so one is ferrite another is cementite and these lamellas are vis are visible here but it is not visible here okay so again you recall about resolution when we were discussing resolution we said that you should be able to resolve to closely spaced entities okay and you should them see you should be able to see them as two separate entities okay so for example here you can see one dark line one dark line or you can see one bright line one bright line as two separate lines or so two separate features the same thing i in this micrograph i am not seeing that i am just seeing one dark uh, feature okay so uh, my resolution is better in this um, image and in this image my resolution is not good i am not able to resolve that uh, this particular dark one actually contain lamellas of one bright one dark one bright one dark feature okay so you again relate it with the resolution which we discussed uh, when we were discussing about the optical system of a microscope okay so this is what we call as lamellar microstructure which which exist in perlite okay and with this i am uh, stopping it here okay just wanted to uh, introduce you to the idea of a microstructure okay and now when we go through phase diagram uh, and we will discuss about phases then you will be able to appreciate that uh, and you will be able to relate what is discussed there with these lectures okay thank you